Hello everyone, welcome to a weird in-between episode of the Voron series. The reason that I'm calling this 9.1 is because I haven't released any other episode in quite some time, but also I don't really have anything big for this episode either. I try to have some decent amount of progress per episode, that's not going to happen here. In this video, spoiler alert, I'm just going to start working on some mods and then cancel it. I normally wouldn't have released this video, but yeah, the thing is, I couldn't release a video in more than a month related to the Voron, and well, I don't think I will be able to release another Voron video in a few more weeks because I'm waiting for parts from China to do the 2.4 upgrade, and well, yeah, I don't know, I don't think they will be here in time in two weeks, so yeah, it will it will take a few more weeks as well. And I kind of wanted to give you a progress update, so yeah, take this video for what it is. If you're not interested, you always have the option to not watch it. Without further rambling, let's get on with the video. Hello everyone, welcome to the next episode of the War On series. Uh, I haven't released a new episode in a while, and I will get to the reasoning behind that. And this is actually... I think three weeks after the last released video, so yeah, and I wasn't just uh, sitting on my ass not doing anything. I tried, did many things, but yeah, I'll I'll explain them one by one. First, I'll start with the smaller uh, mods. Here, as you can see, I used uh, one of the Adafruit Permo Proto boards, basically a glorified breadboard to mount the cable so this works as a kind of like a strain relief because the bottom tube is actually acting as the strain relief the only downside to this is because of this board size I can't mount the cover for this but yeah this is temporary at this point anyway since 2.4 just got released so yeah this will be changed anyway, so it doesn't matter too much, but I will likely implement something similar with the new setup as well. I also now have a UPS pack here, as you can see. That's because I had many power outages. I don't know why. And all of them were like 10 seconds or so, so it was especially annoying considering that the power just came back and I lost my print, so yeah. I now have a UPS back there, it's an Inform brand, it's a local brand owned by Legrand. Uh, it's a line interactive, 2000 volt amps, and I think power factor was 0.6, so it's actually 1200 watts. More than good enough for this. And, well, yeah, I guess I should probably get to the main reason why I haven't done anything major. I wanted to relocate the electronics from down here to up here and also have the Raspberry Pi touchscreen this on there and the spool holder there and well the plan was again have all the electronics there and empty the bottom chamber because uh, it's ever since mounting the panels etc it has been a huge pain to actually get to the electronics here and yeah you have to first of all drag this out of the cabinet which on itself is a big challenge considering this thing weighs a ton like this is a big printer so you'd expect it to weigh a lot but whatever you're imagining triple that and that's what the this thing actually weighs it's like lifting three uh, five gallon water balloons water bottles or something like that it's ridiculously heavy so that on itself is a challenge and then i have to bring it here then i have to dismount all of the panels to not scratch them because it's acrylic and it likes to scratch even if you blow on them so you have to remove all of those and then you have to uh, put it on its side remove all of the six screws just remove some cabling and redo all of that to figure find out that you don't have the uh, camera working so yeah it's a huge pain so i want to as i said fix that so yeah that was the plan i actually bought extrusions and made a whole 
uh, top chamber out of that and started printing parts for it, etc. But I decided it was a bit too uh, complicated, so yeah, I scrapped that and decided to mount them in the back instead. That idea came from uh, Voron 1.8 that they announced. They have some of the electronics in the back and well there is no space in Voron 2 so I again got some extrusions this time I reused some of the ones that I had I didn't buy new but yeah made a basically like a backpack or a hump or whatever you want to call it and again designed it, it designed it in fusion started printing it and yeah I got uh, um, I printed about halfway through but I started having problems and well I, which meant I had to pause and then um, well uh, that also kind of gave me some time to think about it and well this is yet another idea but yeah I think I'm just going to keep the electronics down there but instead of mounting it uh, upside down I'll mount them uh, the right side up and then just have a system for the have a quick way of lifting the bed that also mounts rigidly to these extrusions so it may just be a hinge on the back and then some metal lock on the front and well I will whenever I need to reach the electronics I will hinge the bed and I will uh, reach the electronics from top here so uh, I won't have to carry this out of the uh, cabinet anymore uh, yeah that mostly solves the problems I also wanted to integrate the exhaust fan that I have into the chassis with both of those designs uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that or not but if I do that it will be a separate mode and lastly, I kind of want a spool holder near the front or the center, but you can't really put them in the center because no extrusions, so I guess front. Uh, yeah, that's still something that I'm considering, but at the same time, I could just use like a clothes hanger uh, pipes here and then design something in the middle where it will allow me to just lift the middle part and maybe even have multiple spools hanging and then just routing them through a little hole in the acrylic that goes to the umbilical cord back there and yeah something like that will be the case since the mobius will be gone it won't have any complicated bottom paths anyway so yeah that was what i was working on but even all that even though they were also huge prints they still wouldn't cause this delay I also had some other problems with the 3D printer first of all I had a Delta branded fan die on me I don't know how I managed to do that but yeah that was the hot end fan and that died and that the death of that fan also caused a nozzle clock which means I couldn't print for a while but I fixed that by replacing it with a Dragon hot hand that I ordered for originally for the Afterburner upgrade, which I will do with the 2.4 upgrade. But it didn't stop there. Next, I started having some layer shifting issues yet again, but this time it wasn't diagonal. At least in most cases, I think there were a couple cases where it happened diagonally for some reason, but yeah, it was mostly on the Y direction and well when I inspected it further it turns out one of the MGN9 rails on me one of the MGN9 rails died on me one of the robotic ones that was also originally meant for afterburner upgrade so yeah I tried re-lubricating it cleaning it etc and reinstalled it it worked for a while it worked for a while and then died again so yeah, I replaced it with the set rail originally meant for afterburner, which means I don't have the required additional rail for the afterburner again. So I ordered them from Robotech. So that's part of the parts that I'm waiting from China. 
for the 2.4 upgrade. And the uh, next thing is I started printing ABS parts for 2.4 and well, I made a decent amount of progress. I think I'm done with about 60%, 70% of the parts that I need to print. But yeah, I had another 40mm fan die on me and well, as, as of this recording I haven't figured out the reason but my working theory is that the signal that's driving the 2.4 um, the signal that's driving the hot hand fan coming from the SKR 1.3 board that's that's bad somehow that's my working theory because I can't really come up with uh, any other explanation but yeah that at at this moment is not confirmed yet but the death of that fan meant that I have yet another nozzle clock and well I couldn't clean either one of those nozzle clocks uh, I tried acetone, I tried using thin needles, I even went ahead and bought some acupuncture needles to make sure that something that can fit through the nozzle's hole, but yeah, I couldn't manage to fix it, so I definitely need new nozzles, which again, ordered from China, who knows when they will arrive, so yeah, that's the situation right now, that's why I'm not able to, I'm not going to be able to release another episode for some time. Hopefully it won't take a ridiculously long amount, but who knows, especially with the whole pandemic going on. And yeah, that's kind of the reason that I released this progress update video anyway, because yeah, as I said, I'm not going to be able to release something for a while. So yeah, I know this video wasn't great, but I hope you at least got to know what's going on behind the scenes and still enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave me a like down below and thanks for watching.